Hi everyone, it's Kim from Art Anthology. Thank you for joining me today. The theme of our technique today is quick, it's easy, and it's very colorful. We are going to be taking some items that you will find in your stash or around your house or items that are easy to obtain that are basically white or cream, and we're going to be adding the Art Anthology Dimensional Paints, Coloration Sprays, and Mint minx shimmering inks to make them beautiful colorful embellishments to use in our projects and not just mixed media these are perfect for cards and scrapbooking as well so let's get started i have a lot i want to share with you and i don't want to run out of time so i want to wear some gloves because all of the inks and sprays and paints are highly pigmented and I know they'll stain my fingers and I'm going to have my fingers right down in there. So I'm going to start with some seam tape, which is lightweight. This is rayon seam tape, so it doesn't really matter what is the fibers are, but mine is rayon. And I'm going to use both the coloration spray and the dimensional paint. And I'm going to use both of them, even though applying them is basically the same because they give a different texture. So let's start with the spray. I'm going to be using indigo. I can do this two ways. If I were doing yards and yards of this, I would spray some on my mat, add some water, and then dip my trim in there. But because I just have a little bit, I'm just gonna give this a spray. And if I want, I could add some water if I needed this to go further, because I don't wanna waste my sprays or my paints and I've got a couple spaces there that are still white so I'm just going to give this a squirt of water just to make that spray move rather than adding more spray because I've got plenty of spray on there and you can see how nice and intense that color is now if you wanted a lighter shade you could spritz this with some water and then just put it in a towel and pull some of that color out. But I love the rich color, I think that's beautiful. Perfect color for summer. So I'm just gonna set this aside, let this dry, it shouldn't take long. And then I'm gonna show you how to use it with the paint. Now, one thing I want to be aware of is I wanna make sure that my work surface is clean because if I have the blue on there and then I add my white ribbon and put it in there, that blue is gonna pick up. So just be aware of that. It's easy to transfer those colors if your surface isn't clean. So now I'm gonna take some flamingo paint and this is the sorbet. So it has those sparkles in it. And I, again, don't need much of this, but because the paint is gel-based, it's gonna have a different texture for this ribbon. And I do need to make it more fluid. So I'm going to add some water and then I'm going to just use my palette knife just to kind of pick that paint up. And again, I usually have to spritz this with some water. So I have plenty of paint. I don't need to keep adding paint. Let me just add some water. And again, I can do, if I wanted to do several yards of this, I just have a little more paint on my craft mat and a little more water. But you can see how that colors it nicely as well, a very rich color. Now, because this is paint, this is what I'm gonna do. And I don't heat dry any of this with the heat gun. I just let them air dry. I'm gonna wad this up and I'm gonna show you why. So I'm gonna set this side to dry and it will take a little time since it's all wadded up, but I have a piece that's dry and I wanna show you what that looks like and I also want to make sure I have that paint off my gloves or else everything I'm going to be doing here is going to be that it's going to be flamingo so let me just take a minute to wipe that up and let me show you here is a piece of trim that was done using the paint, wadded up, and then when I opened it, you can see because the paint is gel-based, it holds its shape. The sprays, the trim will just be very relaxed. It won't hold a shape like this, but 
I love the paint. If I want some crinkle in my ribbon, it will hold that shape. So that's ideal to be using the paint for that crinkle look. Okay, let's move on to some cotton ribbon. And because this is thicker, instead of adding a ton of spray to it, and I'm gonna use sprays for this one, I'm going to dampen my ribbon. So let me just spray it. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, but if I already have some moisture in there, if it's already dampened, then I'm not having to use so much of my sprays to moisten that up and have the color blend on that trim. So let's do this. Let me wipe my excess water up. This is damp, it's not soaking wet, but it will absorb that color easier and faster. And I'm just gonna spray two colors on here. Again, if I had a lot, I could spray it on my mat, add water to it, but this is just a little bit. So I'm just gonna spray it. I am gonna do the front and back, even though that will eventually go through to the other side, I'm just going to help it out and spray both sides. So let me pick up this color. And the yellow color that I used is Glorious. It's a bright, beautiful yellow. And I'm going to add Waimea Bay to this. And again, I'm just gonna spritz this in a few, color, few areas. And the colors will blend. So again, I don't try to speed up the drying process. I'm just gonna let them blend and do their own thing. And if I think, okay, well now I have too much green in there. Well, it looks too green because the Waimea Bay is blending with the glorious, the yellow color. I can always go back and add a little more color. If I kind of lose my first color, I can certainly go back and add that. So that takes out a little bit of the Waimea Bay since it's blending and making that beautiful green. So I'm gonna set this aside to dry, but you can see how quick and easy it is to color our trims, no matter what we're using for our project. And then I'm gonna do one last little piece of a cotton trim because I wanna use the shimmering inks and I'm gonna do two different shimmering inks. And when I use the the minks, I like to use a brush and paint it on. I just find that easier since the colors are very, very intense and I'm gonna shake it up because that shimmers on the bottom. It doesn't take much of this, but I do want this to go as far as possible. So let me mix up my two colors. If you want, you can spray it. You don't have to. I'm not going to spray it. I'm going to leave this piece dry. I will add a little bit of water just so my mink shimmering inks can cover just a little more. And now I'm gonna paint this on. And this is a trim that I would have something specific in mind for it. I wouldn't be doing this for yards and yards of trim. Now you can certainly use this on any trim, but I want to show you just kind of a cool effect. And I only have a little piece just because it does take me a little time. And I'm going to do this on the front and back side. Again, it will soak through, but this way I am assured that the color is on both sides, especially if both sides are going to be seen in whatever I'm using it for. Okay, so I'm going to wipe up my pink there. So now I have my little balls that are not colored and I'm going to color them with the purple. So for the hot pink, the color is enchanting and for the beautiful purple, that color is majestic. And again, those are the minks, shimmering inks. And I'm just gonna go, and normally I would take a little more time to do this but I'm just gonna color those balls. And then that color 
will soak up into and blend with the pink just on the bottom portion. And again, if I were doing this for a project, I would take my time and I would definitely color both the front and the back side of the balls because the balls are so thick that that color is probably not going to transfer all the way through. But that will allow me to have a two-toned project. And I'll show you some of that if we have time here at the end where it has dried and those colors have blended. It's absolutely beautiful and very, very vibrant colors. So the last fabric-y type of thing that I want to show you is coloring cheesecloth. I love to color cheesecloth. And it just kind of wads up on itself. But this is, again, another quick and easy substance to use for our cards or our scrapbooks. I'm going to start with the Granny Smith coloration spray. Again, if I was doing a lot of this, I would spray it on my mat, add water. I just have a little bit here, so I'm going to spray directly on. And this absorbs it so fast and it's so fine. It doesn't take much spray. And if I wanted, I could use a little bit of water, but again, this is such a small piece. Now, I could add another color of spray to this to get several colors, but this time I'm going to go back to my paint and I'm going to use another sorbet because it's got the sparkles. This is Bella Boo and it does not take much. I'm just going to put a little bit out and I probably don't even need that much. I'm going to add some water because I need this to become more fluid and then I'm going to just work this into my cheesecloth. And it will be hard to see, but when this dries, I will see some of that light bellaboo purple in there. Plus, it will also be sparkly. And I know that's like impossible for you to see that right now. But I can see where it's thicker some of the Bella Boo in there. And I could definitely add more if I wanted to add a little more texture to this because again, that paint is dimensional. So that will kind of allow me to stiffen up this cheesecloth. So I see a little bit in there. I could probably add more, but I'm just gonna, when I let this dry, I'm just gonna wad it up and let it dry and do its thing. So those colors, you can kind of see now where that Bella Boo paint is in there. But I'm going to wad that up. So I have all these little wads of things drying. So let's shift gears a minute and let's talk about wood embellishments. So we know we can paint wood. You could do the same thing with the spray. I would just put some spray on the mat and use a brush. You can spray these directly, but I have better coverage when I use a brush. And I want to show you this beautiful, it's called Bankroll. It's a uh, mink shimmering inks. Beautiful, beautiful green. I need to shake it up. And because I don't have much surface area to cover, and this isn't going to absorb like the trim or the ribbon, I'm just going to put a little bit of this in my palette. And I'm going to use a brush to apply this to my wood embellishments. Now, if I had a huge wood embellishment that I was trying to cover, I would add some water just to make this go a little further. But quick and easy. So if I were doing a card and I wanted to make a big deal about how old my recipient was, I could easily color these wood numbers, which are really easy to find. And it just soaks in there. And again, depending on the type of wood, that will determine how much soaks in and maybe how much kind of sits on top. But I could let these dry and go back through with another coat if I wanted. But I just love that's a beautiful color, quick and easy. So now these won't take that long to dry. And maybe my person is 89, 8, or 9 to use. So I'm going to just set those off and let those dry. 
and then we're going to move on to a couple other items. One thing I want to do is a doily because not only can I use this maybe for a card, the background of a card, this would be ideal if I had those great big ones for some kind of home decor, if I had a party and I wanted to have specific colors. So I'm going to use two sprays on this. I'm going to use Patience and Salmon. I'm going to start with the Salmon. And again, I'm going to spray directly on this because this is going to absorb it really fast. I don't want to totally saturate it. I want to leave some kind of open areas so I can add my second color. And if I have like, oh, I have so much patience on there, I could go back and add a little salmon. But I kind of like how that's on there. I have both colors on there. Now, ideally, I would love just to let it sit like this, absorb all those colors and not move it. And then when it's dry, pick it up. So it'll be nice and colored and the colors will be fairly intense. But I need the space. So I'm going to just gently pick this up and move this and in an ideal world I would have a piece of paper and I don't because look at that beautiful pattern. I would take a piece of paper and in lieu of that I'm going to take a paper towel and I would pick that up and then I would have that color, that pattern on a piece of cardstock that I could use for a background. So if you're doing this and you're spraying something like a doily, something that's patterned. You may want to have just some extra paper handy to pick up your extra spray or inks and make a background out of it at the same time. Okay, and kind of along the doily lines, I was cleaning out the cupboard and I have all of these coffee filters that I don't need anymore but they're nice and thin and I'm like, I know what I can do with these. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to spray them. I'm using Clover and Peacock Feather. Same process as for the doily. And then I'm going to leave it white. I don't want to totally cover it so I can add my second color in. This is a really dark combination. And what I like to do with these is die cut them up for flowers if I have a flower die that I can cut in different layers. Now this one because of the colors I would use this for the leaves just like the doily. Ideally it would be great if I could just let it sit here soak in all those colors and dry but I need the space so I'm just gonna gently pick this up set that aside to dry And I'm going to show you one last thing because I do want to show you what some of these embellishments can be used on and what they look like once you die cut and put things together. So the last thing that I have are some flowers and I've already sprayed one because I want to do something, a second step to these. And it does have to dry before I do that. So I'm going to use the Timeless Spray, which is a beautiful kind of golden yellow color. These are just little paper flowers. And this is just uh, not even a silk flower. I think this is probably polyester. And I'm just going to spray these because they're so little. And I do want it covered on the back. So I'm just going to put that around, rub that in there on the craft mat, and pick up that rest of that spray to color the backs of those flowers. And this one I'm just going to give a couple squirts to as well. But what a quick and fast way to change inexpensive fake flowers. Now when this dries, if I wanted, I could take a paintbrush with like say shimmering inks or even sprays and just dab into the center, but this does need to dry. So I'm just going to pick up the rest of this spray and then I want to show you the second step that I like to do on all of these flowers. But I do need to let these dry. So let me just set those there. Here is one that I did earlier and I did spray inside and this is still a little damp but it's dry enough that I can do the next step. And for that I'm going to use 
another mink shimmering inks and this one is gold dust and i love this gold dust this is probably my most often used minks so i'm going to shake it up because i want to get that shimmer off the bottom of the bottle and i will not spray this with water i'm just going to put a little bit in there and i'm going to use a fine tip smaller brush and then i'm going to just pick this up and i like it because i can swirl it around and keep that shimmer mixed in and i'm just going to go around the edge of this flower and you won't really see this effect until it totally dries so i will show you one here that is totally dry but it just adds that little gold accent and it blends into because it's paper it just soaks in and blends in with that timeless spray so i won't do the whole thing and let me show you one that has dried. So here is one that when it's totally dry and you can see that gold dust minks just on the edge. And I did the same thing with my little fake flower and you can see where I went back in and just touched the center with another color and I even did it on these little bitty guys put that gold edge around there so you can always add that gold to any of the embellishments that we did I've even gone back and added it to ribbon so I want to show you a couple things that I have completed as far as samples and Just some of the ribbons so let me just start here real quick here are those coffee filters that i had a die i could die cut and layer very very simple to do but bright and colorful here is some of the ribbon that i've colored and here is the one with it's the ball trim and you can see when that dries how those colors blend together so beautifully and this is a piece of the cheesecloth and I did use some gold paint on this but once I finish and I can open it up you can see how beautifully and really delicately colored that is so let me show you a few card samples some of these I have not totally put together because I want to show you the pieces that I used so I'll start with this tag this is where I just use the seam tape and this one was sprayed you can see how it's just soft and very flexible this one I did with the walnut paint and you can see on this one how it keeps that crinkly shape this one's kind of gotten smashed back out but I can crinkle it back up and it will hold that shape for the stamp and die if you're interested in this this stamp and die is from Stamplistic and that is from Northbound. And then all of the inks and the shimmering inks, the paints and the sprays are all from artanthology.net. So let me show you this one and I'm gonna show you the pieces. This is, the background is one using the wheel stencil and using the coloration spray. And I believe I used Siesta Keys for this where I picked it up off the stencil. But here is a piece of that cheesecloth and I can just take a piece of that lay it on my card base and then top it off with whatever my focus point is on my card this stamp and die is the flower medallion again from Stamplistic so I could trim this down but that'll give you my basic pieces I can use to make a card and this time I'm starting with a piece that was my pickup paper from all my playing with the paints and the sprays and that's pretty out there but I love all the colors but if I wanted to subdue it a little here I have my doily that I've covered colored I can put that on top then here again is that flower medallion and this time I've added those little bitty flowers those paper flowers that I've covered and use the 
gold dust shimmering ink on the corner. So another way just to build up the different layers for a card. And then I do have a couple that I actually finished. Here is the Mouse King. And he is on a stencil background with the paint. To be honest, I don't remember the paint colors. But on my Rick Rack braided trim here, I use that shimmering ink, the Bankroll Minx. And look at how beautiful and intense that color is. And then Mouse King, again, is from Stamplistic. And then the final one I have to show you is for Halloween. And I used my mummy on this. And this guy is called Under Wraps. That's the stamp. And then here I've grunged up. This time I've really grunged up my cheesecloth. The stencil that I used is called Brocade. And I used the cotton dimensional paint and then the background just has several different colors of spray so I just had pieces that I could put together to create all of these different layers on my cards so I hope that gives you some inspiration to pull out things that you have around the house that you could easily color and use on your cards your scrapbooks or any of your mixed mixed media projects so thank you for joining me today and I'll see you again in the future